welcome back to the character sculpt series where I run through my entire workflow from start to finish. This is the seventh part, so if you'd like to catch up, there's a playlist to all of the previous parts in the description. Or if you'd rather start here, you can download the base mesh that we finished in the last video for free. The link to that is also in the description. So coming up, we're going to be covering the eyebrows and lashes, creating the hair for curves, we're going to make some braids, and then we'll make a hair material to make the hair look more like hair. Then we'll use another material to kind of fake the flyaway hair look. This one's pretty long, so I'm putting the chapters in the description and on the timeline if there's something specific that you're looking for. Okay, so before we get started with anything, let's go up here to Edit Preferences and search for the word Extra. And we want to have Add Curve Extra Objects and Add Mesh Extra Objects enabled. And we also want to have node wrangler enabled just figured i'd get these out of the way now that way we won't have to come back into preferences again later on all right select the rig and hit h we'll hide it we probably won't need it until way later in the video now this whole time if you've been following through we've had our character sculpt here and it's been looking very alien so let's try to start fixing that with some eyebrows and eyelashes select the base mesh tab into edit mode let's go into face select mode and let's select everything from right here over to here. We'll use that to be our eyebrow. Let's hit Shift D to duplicate. Right click to let go. And then P to separate it. We'll tab out of edit mode, select the eyebrow, tab back into edit mode. And it's in here that we can shape this eyebrow. We want to turn on snapping, face project, individual objects. And if we go to vertex selection here, we can start moving these around. To the general shape of how we want her eyebrow to look. Oh, in case you forgot, we're, we're sculpting Zelda. And um, from what I remember from her character model, she's got some pretty thick eyebrows. Let's move some of these verts around to get a pretty nice eyebrow shape. You can see this purple line here for our crease. We can select everything up here in the item menu and let's just pull the mean crease down to zero. And once you get around about the shape that you'd like, we can add a loop cut right here in the middle. That'll allow us to round this out here and we can sharpen this edge out here a little bit more. So let's tab back into object mode. Let's go over here to our modifiers. We see that we have an armature and a subdivision which is the same thing that our base mesh has. Since we extracted this from our base mesh it keeps the same modifiers. So let's go to add a solidify modifier. And down here in the offset I like to set it at zero and that means wherever the actual geometry is, it's going to extrude it both in the positive and the negative. So your actual geometry is sitting in the center of this. So I'm going to bring the thickness down to 0 0.005. And I'm going to move the solidify above the subdivision. That way the subdivision happens after the solidify. And that'll help round these edges off. So let's pull this up here. You see it's how it's rounded off. If you want your eyebrow a little bit thinner or thicker, you can adjust that in the thickness setting here. Let's actually try 0.4. And that looks a little bit better. Okay, and the last thing, let's go to add modifier and let's add the mirror. And we want the mirror to be all the way up above the armature. Yeah, if your mirror is anywhere below the armature, then when you're in pose mode and you go to move one of these handles then um, it's going to try to move both sides even if your X mirroring is turned off it's going to try to move both sides because of mirroring so yeah we want mirror to be above the armature that way everything follows correctly so there's our eyebrows let's click into the base mesh again edit mode and we've got these two rings running around the inside of the eyelid. Let's go back into face select mode. We'll select both of these loops. We'll hit shift D to duplicate them. Right click, let go, P to separate, selection, tab back out. And then let's select that ring. If you're having a little bit of trouble, go into x-ray mode. That way you can click through it. Now back into edit mode. You can see we've got this purple line here. That's because we have a crease there. Let's select everything. Let's get rid of the main crease. And it's a little bit hard to see. Let's go down to the object properties. Scroll down and click in front. And you can see it a little bit better. 
Let's select these faces right here in the corner of the eye and then we'll hit delete. And then with edge select, let's select these edges here, S to scale, we'll scale them down pretty low. Same thing for over here, we'll select these two edges, scale them down. And you can see that it isn't positioned right, like when we're out here in object mode, you can see that it jumps back down in, and then when we're in edit mode it jumps out. If we go over here to our modifiers, and under the armature, we turn on the edit mode, and we also turn on on cage, and it'll snap into its actual position visually. Make sure you turn off snapping. Let's grab these edges here. Let's move them in closer towards the eye. And that one actually looks okay. We'll go to vertex select mode. We're going to pull this one out. And then we'll try to taper everything in to that one. And then if you want these to be a little bit more tapered in, you can select them and pull them in just a little bit. Okay, let's turn the in front off on that and see how it's kind of seems like it's clipping through. We can add the solidify on this as well. I like to keep mine at zero. Let's put a zero over here so it's 0 0.001. Trying to clip in the eyelid right here. So let's tab into edit mode. Let's select these verts and we'll just pull them out a little bit. GY until that disappears. Let's bring the solidify above the sub div. We may need to take the whole outer loop here and move it forward just a little bit. Something like that. And we'll finish off with adding mirror modifier. Pull it above the armature. And that should be pretty good. If we select the lashes, go down here to the materials, and then we select the same material that we used for our iris. It'll look black in the viewport. So, She's already starting to look a little less alien. Now let's get started on the hair. We're gonna use curves to make the hair, but before we do that, let's uh, tab into edit mode with the base mesh selected. We're gonna wanna make a hair cap, and this is gonna help cover all the gaps that we leave, if we leave any gaps when making the hair. So we'll select this, which is around where the hairline is, and then um, we'll get this loop here, and then holding control, and shift while clicking we can go around this ear and then over here as well shift click that one and then hold down control and clicking around this ear until we get to here and then we can just start clicking out and selecting this entire head piece like that we should have everything we need shift D to duplicate it this is going to be the same way that we did the eyelashes and the eyebrows go over to modifiers we're going to go solidify with zero. We'll make this kind of small. Pull this above subdivision. And that should work for our scalp. Okay, so getting to making these hairs. The main things we're going to be using is shift A. We're going to be using a path. And you can see that you bring a path in. It's got five verts. You can move these around. You can see where our verts are connecting, but it's actually curving this path here and this path can take on a shape if we like if we go down here to the object data properties for the curve under the geometry tab where it says round we can give it some depth and this is just a tube that's fine if you want to have if you want to make cylinders where your hair is going to be cylindrical you just want it to have a completely round shape but we can also use this object over here to define what the bevel is going to be. So if we tab out into object mode, we shift A and go down to curve again, we can choose any of these shapes. Let's say that we choose a circle. And if we edit this curve, and we just move some of these points around. When we select our path and under bevel, if we change the round to object and we use the eyedropper tool, and we go over to the circle that we created and edited, then it's gonna take the shape of that circle. See, that's the same shape as this. And we can still, if we, if we edit the original circle, we can still edit the bevel of the path that's referencing, referencing that circle. 
so that means we can use the bevel reference to change the shape of this path and we'll use this path to be our hair strands. Now there's a couple ways that we can edit this. We can hold down Alt and S and that will let us scale it. And you can scale just individual points like this. Alt and S just on the end there. And you can do just the center. And this also works with um, proportional editing. Like if you just wanted to scale a little bit more. If you wanted it to make a taper, you can use proportional editing to help you with that. And another way that we can control the way this thing is shaped is with the twist. We can select a vert or all the verts and hold down control and press T and you can twist it along the length. As many twists as you want. So we can twist the whole thing or we can twist just a piece of it. So yeah, that's the basic idea of how these curves are going to work. So I'm going to get rid of everything. Now Zelda's hair is basically broken down into three different types of pieces. We've got from here her bangs, they come straight down like this, which is all just pretty well one square shape. So for that, we're going to use a rectangle as a bevel reference. We might round the edges off just a little bit. So that would be her bangs. And then she has braids that come down on top of her bangs. And uh, for now, we're just going to use a regular round bevel shape to represent those braids. And then later on, we're going to replace those with actual braids. We'll do that later in the video. But for now, we're just going to use a regular circle as the bevel. And then the back, which is her strands, is kind of pointy. And big old chunks, big old strands. And for those, we're going to use another circle. But we're going to kind of add some depth and shape to it. That way, it's going to have some waves and stuff to it. So we're going to end up making two different bevel shapes. We'll just use the default circle for this one here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got her little sideburn dealy things here that comes down like that. But we'll also use this one up here in order to do that one. Okay, let's get started with her bangs. So let's shift A. Let's make our bevel object first. We'll go curve. And I like to start with the rectangle for this type of shape. So it went ahead and threw us into edit mode and this is our rectangle. With everything selected, let's hit S and Y. We're going to scale it along the Y to make it thinner. And then let's grab, let's grab these corner points here that are in the center. Let's hit S and X and we'll pull them out a little bit like this. And then for these, let's hit S and Y and we'll pull these out a little bit. And the ends are still pretty sharp. So let's hit A and then V will change the handle types. If we hit automatic, it's going to change it to like this where these are going to be straight. And then we'll hit A, and then we'll right click and subdivide it. Let's grab these two, we'll scale it on Y to bring it back in. Select these guys here. And then it gets it gets a little hard to select these. Because we want we want to select these corners right here. Like that. But it gets a little tough without selecting everything else. If we select all of this, it'll reveal the handles, and then we can box select those handles but then we still have the middle selected which we don't want so now we can hold down control and box select the middle and it deselects the so now let's hit scale Y that way we can pull this on in and what I wanted to end up with was this rounded edge here now if we want to add some detail in this we can um, hit a V and then put these to free now we can freely move these if you want to add a little bit more detail we can subdivide it again that way we get extra handles in between. And don't it doesn't look like much, but we're we're creating a slight profile. So let's see how that works. We'll add a curve path down here in the object. Let's select our taper object. We'll tab into edit mode. Let's scale it down some, and then let's Alt S to scale it along the bevel. Go into front view, and we'll bring it up. Let's R90 to rotate it, and let's bring it in front of the character a little bit. Let's continue to scale it down, get it close to where we can use it on our face. So let's bring it close to the center, and we'll rotate it back like this again. And let's just position these verts the way that we want them. We know we want one in the center, 
we want the rest of them to be kind of coming down the head and I like actually like this one to be over here and then this one close to the top up to it that way it's gonna be shoving the the middle part of that down we can bring this one up here kind of even these out a little bit okay let's go into side view three let's hit nine to go to the other side and let's GY to bring it back let's bring these guys backwards this one goes on back behind the ear a little bit and we've kind of got a weird shape let's hit a and then control T to twist it let's get it closer to the twist that we want for some reason whenever you try to move the very ends of the curve it likes to mess with the twist but usually in here you're okay so it looks like uh, we can twist it a little bit more to conform to the front of the head this goes behind the ear we want to scale this down move this behind the ear back in the front view to take a look and see what we got bring this down here a little bit and it messed with the twist there we go so there's a couple different ways that we can get this to be on the other side of the head. We can go into the modifiers and add a mirror modifier and that will mirror it around. Except the only problem with the mirror modifier on curves is you can't apply them. You need to convert it into a mesh first to apply them and if you do that then it won't be as easily editable. So if for some reason say the wind was blowing and you wanted this right side to be doing something different, you wanted it to be asymmetrical. You wouldn't be able to do that with a mirror modifier. In order to get this over to the other side you'd select this in object mode, shift D to duplicate it, and then hit control M and then on the axis that you want to flip it on which would be X. So we hit X then it places it on the other side mirrored on the X axis control M mirror so that's one way that you can do it too to get it over there but the good thing is is if you wanted this side to be different from that side you'll be able to edit this separately but her bangs aren't gonna move for our character so let's just use the mirror modifier on this one and you can see it gets a little gummy in the center here and we want to crease so we can actually turn merge off and it'll give us that line in the center here now we can edit this a little bit more Sometimes it just takes a lot of tweaking. Okay, could probably do one more thing in the bevel. We'll get these. There we go. Seems a bit better. Okay, that should be all that we're going to be using this bevel for. So let's hide it. Let's add a new curve, another path, and then down here in the bevel geometry, let's just um, turn the depth up on this round tab into edit mode. We'll scale it down. We'll bring it up here. Scale it on down. Alt S to scale the radius. And we'll go into top view which is 7. We'll place this right in the center right there. We know this is going to end up at the ear. And then let's just place these other verts close to where we need them. In the side view. Let's get these in place. This needs to come all the way down here. This guy can come down. Probably this guy too. In the front view, let's move these out closer to where we want them. I scale this guy down here, bring it straight down, and bring this one over. That way it does kind of the same thing, the way it's popping up out of the middle of the head there. Let's check the side view again. Let's add a mirror to get it over to the other side. Let's GX to bring this to the center a little bit more. We'll turn merging off again. And that should be a good placeholder for the braids. Like I said, we're going to work on those a little bit later. Okay, let's add a new bevel reference. Shift A, curve. Let's add a circle. We'll tab into edit mode. And from the top view, with everything selected, let's right click and subdivide it. And then let's select these four in the center here. We'll scale these down. And then we'll hit A, we'll hit V, and make sure that they're all free. We'll select these four again. Then holding down Control, we'll deselect everything that's in between those. That way we've just got the outer part of these handles. We'll hit S to scale. Let's select everything. Holding down Control, we'll deselect all of the other ones here. And then we'll deselect the middles of these. S to scale. Kind of got a clover shape going on here. Now let's hit A, 
and we're going to scale it on the Y axis to bring it down. If you want to add more points, like I said, that's fine. You can make this any kind of shape that you want. Tab out and we will add a new path curve and object and we'll select that as our reference. And this is going to be the shape of our hair. I'm going to edit mode with this and we'll bring it down, scale it down some. And we'll start making some hair. So we're going to start making the under part of the hair. This is going to be two different layers of hair. We're going to start by making the under part, which is going to be just like this, the bottom part of the hair. And we only have to go up to about right there. And then when we start making the upper part, it's going to overlap like that. And that'll cover the top of the hair. And it'll give it kind of a layered look, not make it look as thin as it actually is. So let's grab the bottom vert here. We're going to Alt S and make it pretty small. And we'll try to taper the rest of this into it a little bit. And this top piece here can probably taper in too. So I'm going to tuck this one right behind the ear. And then I'm going to have it curve around like this. Once you get the shape that you want, let's turn the twist around like that. Let's bring it into the head a little bit more. Let's see if we're clipping into the ear any. If we are, we can just move it closer to the head and then move the top vert out a little bit. Whenever you move, sometimes when you move the tips, it just screws the twist up or the twirl. That's actually looking a little too flat. So I'm gonna go into the circle here. I'm gonna scale it back out on Y. Now when we come back in, it looks a little bit better. Okay, let's select this path here. Shift D to duplicate it. We'll bring it up a little bit. That way we can swing the hair back some more. We'll bring it out with GX. We can probably scale these up some more too. All right, we're gonna tuck this into the braid here. You know, we're not worried about things clipping or overlapping. We just don't want them to clip into the ear. Alright, let's hover over the one that we just did here. We'll hit L to select all of it. And then Shift D to duplicate it again. We'll bring it back here. We'll hit 1 and then 9 to get the reverse of that. Let's pull it back here to the back. We're going to start working on the back of the hair. Try to get this twist back. So let's grab these three middle ones here. We'll Alt S and we'll make these bigger and we're gonna want these back hairs to come about down to her shoulder bring these up try to space them out some bring this into the head we're just gonna we're just gonna clip the whole curve in then we'll start shaping this bring these closer okay let's add a mirror modifier I mainly want to see where these two in the center back here meet up. So it looks like we can pull these apart a little bit. And we'll move these middle pieces closer together. Okay. So let's hit L on this again. Shift D. We'll move it over. Oh, and it looks like for some reason I brought the tips of it back up. It's supposed to be down here at the neck. Let's bring these back down. So with that next piece, we can twist it a little bit. Can bring it forward. So we can twist it some more. Can bring these tips closer to the center. Let's bring these forward some. We're clipping into our little side hair piece, so we might have to move it. Let's take these here and we'll move them out. And it seems like we could put one more in this little slot here. So let's select all of this one, Shift D. We'll bring it in around there. And if it's getting a little rough to see, the uh, the one that you're currently have anything selected on is always going to be orange. If that helps you figure out what the points are that you're trying to grab. And I know it can get a little cluttered. We're going to start a new object here in a second. That way this won't be as confusing. Okay, so that should be good for now. If you want to add some more layers, you can. Like, you're looking from down here at this angle. You could see that you could see the back of her head there. So if you want to, you can duplicate some more to add some more. That's fine. Actually, I think I am going to do that. I'm going to select these two here. 
go into the side view here. I'm going to shift D to duplicate them. And I'm going to GY to bring them in. And Alt S to scale them down. And then just regular S to scale them in. Okay, I think that's got all the under hair filled out. So now let's do the upper hair. Select any of these. I'm going to go for this one in the back because it's mostly straight. Hit Shift D and then we'll hit P to separate it. We'll tab out and just select that piece that we just made. You might have to go into x-ray mode to get to it. Go into edit mode. Now let's go into the side view. We'll pull it out a little bit. We'll rotate it over. And we're going to want to start all the way up here at the top of the head. We're going to pull these down. These are going to end up down here. Something like this. Now I realize you can always extrude or subdivide and add more points, but I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to keep all of these curves having one, two, three, four, five vertices. That way I don't have to make so many materials. And I'll explain that a little bit later. Let's move this out a little bit. Let's go into top view, we'll rotate it around. Let's duplicate this one one more time. We'll bring it over here and rotate it around. I'm trying to tuck in this piece of the into the braid down here. We'll pull these in closer to the head. We'll twist them to match the turn of the head there. We'll reverse this and make it stick this way. Looking good so far. Select this one here. We'll duplicate it. We will separate it. And then we will select it. We'll remove the mirror modifier. Tab into edit mode. Hit A. We're going to scale it on the X axis by zero. That way it flattens it all out. And then up here in the median, let's go and type in just zero. That way it puts it dead in the center. And that's our center piece of hair. Let's um, bump it out just a little bit. We'll hit GZ on this to pop it out. We'll hit GY to bring this back. And the same thing with these ones. That way they're sticking out of the back there. Okay, so that should be all of the upper part there. We might be able to fix this by scaling it. And then bringing it back. We're going to hide that with um, when we replace these braids. We're going to hide this little seam here. And if it doesn't hide it, that's okay because we got our little skull cap that we made that it's going to have a texture on it that's going to be underlying hair just in case you can see through it. All right, we just need maybe one more piece of hair to fill in this gap here. So let's select one of our hair pieces here. Hit L to select one of them. Shift D, pull it out. P to separate it. Tab out. See if we can select just it. Edit mode, scale this down. See if we can bring it over. Let's bring these things a little closer together here. So we can have it tuck in right there. Actually, let's have this come down. Then this can come down. And this can come back out. And then we'll just select these that are clipping into the hair and we'll just pull these out. I have to come up because of the ear. And then this is going to have to pop back down to cover up that gap. Okay, I think that's gonna work. Let's get our little sideburny things here. Just select this one here that we was already in. We'll duplicate it. Rotate it up. Let's bring this point in that way. It's gonna pop up like that. And then it can curve back around like this. Let's see how that looks. It's a little angled. Let's rotate it up like this. And then scale it on X again. Scale X zero. We'll scale it down some. Bring it up. Let's duplicate that. Let's make it a little smaller. We'll just clip it into the other piece there. Now let's duplicate that small one that we made. We'll bring it out. We'll rotate it this way. We'll put it back in. In front view, we'll bring it over this way. And we'll actually bring this one out a little bit more. 
So that should be her little sideburn deals. Okay, to create the braids in object mode, let's hit Shift A, go to Mesh, and down here, because we have extra objects enabled, we can click on Single Vert, Add Single Vert. You can't really see it in there, but if you tab into Edit Mode, because it's already selected, and hit G, you can see that Single Vert moving around. Let's hit Forward Slash to focus in on that and isolate it. And we'll hit 7 to go into Top View. Up here, let's turn Snapping on and let's select Increment. Now, to create this braid, I'm pretty well just following a tutorial that was made by Blender Art, which is the same way that most tutorials show to actually create these braids. So, with our vert selected, hit E to extrude, and you can see that it's snapping to the grid here. If it's not snapping, you may need to hold down Control to make it snap. But we're going to take this and we're going to bring it all the way out to this here. You can, you should be able to see it, but there is two um, bolder looking grid lines. So we're going to go to the second one here. Now we're going to control R to add a loop cut. We're going to add three in. So scroll your mouse wheel up until you have three dots. Click to accept. We're going to grab this one here, the second one, and hit G. We're going to move it down one, two, three, four notches. And then the same thing over here except for we're going to go up. One, two, three, four. Now let's select all of these verts, right click and subdivide. Now we're going to select these two before the last, and then holding down shift we're going to select these two, which is two before the first. Now let's press one to go into front view, and with these still selected let's hit G, and we're going to go up one, two, three snaps. Now over here in our modifiers let's add the array modifier and put the count up to 11. Let's add another array modifier, put the count to 3, and on factor X put 0 0.03. Oh, and make sure that on this first array modifier that you click merge. Let's tab out into object mode, we'll right click, go to convert to, and curve. Now we have object data properties that have the curve properties here. If we go down to the bevel and where it says round, if we bring this up, you can see that we have a braid. If we go to the modifiers for this curve, add a subdivision surface, bring it up to two. If we right click and shade smooth it, you can see we just need to adjust our depth on our curve to get the type of braid that we want. If you don't want it to be round, you can also use an object, just like we did on the other curves. You can click here and you can see all of the different curves that we've made so far. So if we click on Bezier Circle, you can see the braids take the shape of the second profile that we made. So if we tab in to Edit Mode, hit A and Alt S, we can scale these all up. And this behaves just like a regular curve. You can Control T to twist it. It's the same thing. I'm going to keep it on round. Alright, now if we backslash back out of there, you might find that your braids may be gigantic. If they are, then just scale them down. And it looks a little goofy. That's because we've got our depth set really high. Okay, I'm going to go into top view here. So I can bring this on down. Looks like it's going to be even smaller. That is too small. Just a little bit more. Alright, I think I can work with that one. So let's bring these braids over. I just want to see exactly the size that I'm going to want to use for these. Which that should be fine. I'm going to delete these first few verts. Okay, let's select our braids here. Go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry. It's going to place it right in the middle there. And then when we click this, let's hit Alt-G and it'll bring us back to the center here. Now let's add a curve path. We'll go tab into edit mode. We'll scale it down. That way it's roughly the size of the braid. Select the braid. Add a curve modifier. And then we'll have to turn on X-Ray though in order to see the curve path. Let's click on the eyedropper tool and let's select the curve. If for some reason yours jumps over the way that mine did, um, there's an easy fix for this. We can go to object mode, select the curve, and then while still in object mode, we can just move the curve over 
top of the braid. If we tab into edit mode, we should be able to move that braid around and it'll follow the curve. So, let's hit A, let's bring this up to her head, hit seven, that way we can get it right to the tip here. So I'm gonna bring this down, and that way we have it kind of coming into the head. And then we'll just shape this to the head. Let's hit three, that way we can see what we're doing from this side. And I, I know that the braid is too long, we're gonna, we're gonna take care of that in a second. Just trying to match the reference that we made earlier. Might have to turn the twist. Try your best to finagle it into shape. And that should be pretty good. Let's tab out. Let's select the braid. Let's apply the curve modifier. And it may change the shape a little bit. You see our curve is still in there. We can get rid of that. On the braid, let's select it. We'll tab into edit mode. And really this long trailing end here, we can get rid of everything below this ear here. So let's delete a few verts. That way we've got a pretty easily delete everything down there and then up here we can choose proportional editing here select a few of these we can hit alt s and start bringing these up a little bit we slip select the very bottom down here we can bring these back down we grab our old placeholders here let's hit delete to get rid of them that way we can see a little bit better here what we've got to work with and we can grab some of these Let's turn connected only off. Let's, we can grab some of these and just try to nudge them into place a little bit better. Let's add a modifier. We'll go to mirror. Let's turn merge off and see how our braids look. All right, I think that's the braids. Could probably stand to increase the size just a little bit right here. Okay, so that's pretty well the hair modeled. Now, if we open up our rig, you can see that the hair isn't gonna move with our head just yet. So, let's hide the rig. What we wanna do is select all of these hair pieces and then parent them to the rig. You can box select these hair pieces pretty easily. We can go into x-ray mode and then just select the back of the head here, but don't actually select anything that's a part of the base mesh. And that should get a lot of the stuff now we can shift click the braids and then the bangs and then the sideburns and that should be yeah that's all of the hair pieces while we have these selected though let's go over here and add a new collection it looks like a filing box with a plus on it let's click that and let's drag everything that we've got down into this collection and we'll name this hair so now we can click on the first one and click on the last one with shift held and it'll select all of these things. Let's unhide our rig. With this still selected, let's hold down shift and click the rig. Tab into pose mode. We'll select the head bone, which is this big circle on top. We'll hit control P, which is the parent menu, and then we'll select bone. Since our hair isn't gonna be doing any deforming, if we need to sculpt it into place later on, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna move the points, but it's not going to actually react to the bones moving except for them moving with the head. So now if we clear all of our selection, go back into pose mode and we move this head bone, you can see that all of our hair is moving with our head. So yeah, the hair modeling is finished, but I was gonna include this later on in the tutorial where we go through the materials, but since this is part of the hair, I kind of want to do it right now. So let's go ahead and add materials to the hair. We'll drag up our timeline here and we'll change it to the shader editor. And the, the, the materials that we're going to be adding for the hair is going to be pretty well the same thing that Pancake Manicure teaches in his hair with curves tutorial but we're gonna change a few things so we can have some flyaways it's gonna be a little bit different but the main core of it is stuff that I learned from that video let's go over to here to the the middle circle here the material preview we'll click on it over here we're gonna have seen world and seen lights unchecked you can choose whichever HDRI you want to use. I'm just going to use this studio lighting one. And I'm actually going to have the, the scene lights turned on because uh, my default light is still in the scene up here. If you've deleted your default light, that's fine. Just add a new light in. It's Shift-A down here in the lights. You can just insert a new point light. 
the defaults are 1000 watts and it's white and it's just above the head here and I'm actually going to shift a I'm gonna add a plane and I'm just gonna have it here beside the head so I can I'm gonna use it as a sort of a preview material preview while I'm working on this hair so with the plane selected I'm gonna go down here to the material properties we're gonna click new and we're gonna name this hair and then over here with our hair out objects, I'm going to have them have the same material, the hair material. So let's pull up our material editor here. We'll keep our little head up here in view. Let's hit Shift A. Go to search and type in noise. We're gonna use a noise texture. Since we have Node Wrangler enabled, we can hit Control T and that's gonna add a mapping and texture coordinate node. Let's change this from generated to UV into the vector. And if we hold down Control and Shift and click on the noise texture, it's going to plug it straight into the material output and you can see up here on our plane this is what our noise texture looks like. Now over here in the mapping node if we go down here to the scale and go to Y if we start to pull this up you can see that it starts to squish that noise texture and it's kind of looking like hair strands right here. Let's take the X scale if we move it down it starts to stretch it along the X axis which makes it even more strand like. If you bring it all the way to zero, it's just gonna be straight lines going all the way across. So we might want a little bit, just a little bit, to add a little bit of variation into that. Next, let's shift A and add a color ramp. We'll put it right after the noise texture and then control shift click the color ramp so we can see it. If for some reason it's coming up as white like this, that's because the alpha got hooked in. So let's, let's hook the color into the surface. So this is what we have. This is where we can control the color of our hair. Let's select the white handle here and let's make it kind of a blonde. Kind of an orangey light, really light orangey blonde. And that's going to take the whites and then everything that's black. If we change this black handle, we can change its color. So let's go around the same spot and make it a little bit darker. We'll go into the reds a little bit more. Make it a little bit darker. And if your hair strands aren't looking the way that you want, you can adjust the scale slider here on the noise texture the higher you set it the thinner the strands get you can change the detail it's gonna make your strands more or less pronounced you've got your distortion down here that's gonna thin things up a whole lot so there's all these different sliders or if you want to have skinnier strands you can bring the Y axis up a whole lot more if you want them to be more uniform you can bring X all the way down to zero and if you don't like the placement of some of these strands you can just go over here to the location and change the X location or the Y location or even the Z location. You can change any of these locations and uh, it's, it's pretty well just giving you a random seed. It's moving the, moving the noise texture around. And this is actually going to be the same texture that we use on all of the hair. So if you want to, you can bring this into all of the hair parts, even on the braids. So I realize this kind of makes it a little bit hard to see what's going on, like what pieces of hair is what. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. We've got, you can see this little gap here. Let's go into x-ray mode, see if we can isolate that. That's this little scalp guy here. Let's add the hair to it too. Now it doesn't have any UV, so we're not going to get any strands on it. If we tab into edit mode, hit A, U, and unwrap, you can see that we've got strands on it now. And that's just the automatically generated um, UVs that it gave us. If we go over to the UV editor, you can see that this is the way that it wanted to present it. If you want to change the way that those the 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 uh, the strands are moving along the head, you can hit A down here and you can rotate this any way that you'd like. If you want the strands to be closer together on the head like that, you can um, you can scale it on the Y axis. You can see how the strands are getting tighter, more like hair so yeah tab out of edit mode and you can see our hair on our scalp here okay let's take the isolation off now you can see that this right here this gap was where it was at let's get back into the shader editor if you want to have this to be a little bit more darker you can pull this up you can see how it's adding the the color is boosting it up all right if we want to add roots to the hair we hit shift a and add a gradient texture place it right here. We will take the UV from this texture coordinate node and we'll place it into the vector. We'll add another color ramp. We'll hook the color into the factor and then if we 
control shift click color ramp you're going to see the effects of this we can pull this left slider forward some we can use this as a mask so if we put in a mix rgb or if you're using a version of blender that's later then what I'm using, I'm using 3.3, you're just going to use a mix node, but there, there's going to be a drop down to let you change it from different mix types. So I'm using mix RGB in my version. We'll hook the color of our hair color into the color one slot, and then we'll hook the color of the gradient texture color ramp into the factor. Preview the mix node. You can see that it masked it out, except for it masked it the wrong way. So we we'll have to drag these handles the opposite way. If the gradient is a little too harsh, like to me that looks a little too harsh, we can go down here where it says linear and we'll go down to B spline. Then it's going to be a little bit stronger. We can add another paddle or another handle and change it to black to help crunch it. That way we can crunch it up a little bit closer to the top. And what this is doing is anything that is white is going to be masked out. And then we can change this color here to anything. Um, just change it to our darkest color over here and that's going to be our root color. Probably go a little darker. And if you're not getting enough roots you can always back this paddle off. See on our preview here it's dark and then comes out to the normal texture. We can plug this mix into the base color of the principal BDSF. That way we get all the extra stuff in here like the roughness and stuff like that. Okay, up next we're going to add some anastrophic. If we go shift A and search for anastrophic, you'll notice that nothing comes up. We have to change our render engine to cycles. Now when we search for it, it should show up. Anastrophic BDSF, let's add that. We're going to pull back to our texture coordinate node and under UV we're going to pull that into the tangent and I'm going to pull over into cycles here that way we can see the results. Let's bring the anastropy up just a little bit. Let's pull our color into the color and let's um, control shift click this that way we can preview it. And on the rotation, let's bring the rotation about right there. Let's shift A, let's add a mix shader. We'll drop it in here and then we're going to drop our principled into the second shader and we have shiny hair. Let's move the factor slider because it's a little too shiny. And let's let's bring the roughness up some to take some of that shine away. Let's shift A, search, we'll add a bump. We'll place it about right in here. And we're going to come off of this noise texture. We'll bring the factor to the height and we'll bring the normal into the normal. And let's bring this normal up into the anastropic BDSF2, or BSDF, I'm sorry. Let's bring the strength down to 0.1 and the distance down to 0.2. Okay, let's select this color ramp here. We'll shift D to duplicate it, and we'll bring it down. We'll bring the color into the factor here. And then with this selected, if we go over here to the node tab, we can click reset node, and it'll change all the handles and the colors back to normal. Let's control shift click this so we can see what's going on. We're gonna bring this handle down about a third of the way. Then we're going to insert a math node. We're going to hook it in between, change it to multiply. Then we're going to come up here and grab this noise texture and we're going to bring it down and put it into the value. Let's duplicate this color ramp and we'll put it right after the multiply. Let's zoom out a bit so we can see. We're going to duplicate this mix shader. Put it right here. We're going to plug it into the top one and then we're going to plug our color ramp into the factor and then we're going to shift A, search, and we're going to look for a transparent BSDF, not the translucent, the transparent one. And we're going to hook it into the second shader slot. And what this has done, it's made the tips transparent. It's a little hard to see on here, but if we shift click on our color ramp, you can see where where the mask is happening at. You can see how the tips are being frayed because of this mask. You can change the look of this mask by moving the second color ramp that's right after the multiply math, math node. The white parts will be transparent 
If you want more of that, you can move the black away. We want it to be spiky, so we want to crunch these a little bit. And if you want that to run up the hair a little bit more, you can come to the color ramp that's right before the multiply. You can pull the black back and it'll bring it up the hair. At the real time, you can see before the math node, pulling this back, phrase the hair a lot. We want to bring it closer to the tip. We want something closer like that, that way it looks a little bit more fuzzy on the very tips. Like that. And you can see our little preview plane that we made here. This is what the actual shader looks like. We got all of our hair pieces in a collection. Let's close this collection and let's right click it and duplicate collection. So we've got hair 001. Let's open that up with our extra plane here. Let's, let's select our extra plane and we'll move it. Let's move it to the other side. Now back in object mode, let's select all of our hair pieces except for the plane. We'll tab into edit mode and you're going to see all of the verts from all these different pieces. Let's hit A to select all, and then Alt S, and holding down Shift, let's scale it up just a bit. Okay. Back in object mode, let's hide the original hair pieces, the whole collection. And we'll select any of these. Let's select the bangs here. We'll go down to the material, and under hair, let's hit this little copy button to copy this material and add a new one. And let's, let's just name this hair strands. Let's change all of the hair materials that's in this collection over to hair strands. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. If you're in here in the um, material preview, you'll notice that the transparency isn't working. You'll have to go down here in your materials with the, um, let's say we're looking at the hairs that we've already done. You'll have to scroll down to the settings and in blend mode you're going to want to put this to alpha hashed. So let's do that to both of those and our materials should be pretty good to be viewed in Eevee. Okay with this hair strands let's pull the shader editor back up and we're going to want to do a little bit of editing. Let's click on this color ramp that's right past multiply control shift click it that way we can preview it and what we're going to want is these strands to encompass the whole thing so let's bring this black slider before the multiply all the way up as far as it'll go and we can bring this white slider over just a little bit more but you can see we don't have many strands we could probably pull this a little closer or further away you can start to see more strands but that's not really going to help us much. We'll have to go up to uh, the mapping node up here. Let's change this X to zero. That way these strands are full and goes all the way across. Let's bring this distortion value up on the noise texture. That's going to give us more strands. And we'll bring the scale down on the noise texture. That's going to make our strands fatter. If you need them to be even fatter, you can bring the Y value down over here. Pull some of these sliders on these color ramps around. Okay, let's preview this. Let's see what this looks like. So we've got a lot of seeing through this stuff. I would really like for this end here to be transparent too. The very tip of it. So let's see if, if I switch this over to here. I think if we invert this one and invert this one and, and I also don't want this to be solid over here either so let's take this and let's put it on this side and we'll make this one black we'll put this one closer to the end we'll make this one white we'll put this one closer to this end and yeah, I phrase it out a whole lot Let's take a look over here. Okay, so the center is still a little too thick. So let's take the scale down on it. Just a little trial and error. 
There, we're getting a little closer. Now we can see we've got all these strands everywhere. If we unhide our original hair material, these strands are on top of those. It's kind of hard to tell. Let's select all of our hair pieces again. Tab into edit mode. And you can already see that they're kind of, they, there's kind of flyaways. Let's hit Alt S. And as we scale it up, you can see our flyaways in the hair there. Kind of protruding over the hair. And you can see right here when I try, when, when we're looking at the ends of these strands, right there, they need to come out a little bit more. So let's come down to over here. We'll see where they're coming down to. And we could maybe bring this out a little bit more out to the tip. Let's try that out. That's a whole lot better. Yeah, you can see that they come pretty close to the end now. So there we have it. That's, uh, that's pretty well our hair. Okay, let's see if we can do something about her eyebrows. Let's select the eyebrows. Let's tab, tab into edit mode. We'll hit A, U to unwrap it. And then let's assign our hair material to it. We can see that strands are pointing straight up. Let's tab over into the UV editor. Let's hit A and we can rotate it. Kind of close to what we need. Let's turn on proportional editing. We'll grab this here this point right here and we'll hit R to rotate it and then let's grab this point and rotate it that looks a little closer let's hit A let's scale on the Y axis that way we can make these tighter let's make it even tighter let's tab out let's duplicate this we'll go into the shader editor and bring this closer to the end over here that way we've got more dark strands than light strands okay let's tab out let's duplicate this go into edit mode and we'll go into the side view let's hit s to scale it just a little bit and let's move it forward just a bit g y let's change the material from hair 001 let's change it to hair strands and there we go. That is everything that I wanted to show you guys on hair today. Um, if you're not a fan of the eyebrows, you don't have to do it that way. You can, you can always get rid of the top one there and just, um, you can change this however way you'd like. It's whatever you want to make. That's the cool thing about it. So yeah, there we go. There's some, um, hair. We kind of faked hair strands going out. We've got our frayed ends down on the bottom. That way it doesn't come to such a sharp point. Even though it doesn't look super, super great right now, it'll look really good when we put some good lighting on it. Yeah, it'll, it'll look really good when we put some good lighting on it. And uh, just, just so you know, if there's some things that you don't like, like, look at this, this is a big chunk of a strand that's going right here, and I'm not a big fan of it. You can always come in here, you can move the X location, move those strands out of the way, or you can boost the scale up, Make the strands skinnier. Depending on the look you want, it can be anything you want. That's all I've really got for right now. Thanks so much for sitting through the whole thing and hanging out with me and making some hair for Zelda here. In the next video of the series, we're gonna be going through making some clothes and some accessories. And then the one after that, we're gonna be making the rest of the materials and then we're gonna finish off the entire series with some lights and we're even gonna animate a turnaround turntable for Zelda to stand on. And I hope you join me in the next one. Thanks for hanging out again and I'll see you next time. All right, bye.